strong quake, 4.4 magnitude and large swarm at Long Valley Caldera. It's a supervolcano of California, as we know, one of the very high threat volcanoes of the West Coast. The quake swarm was a number of quakes, just about within a 10-15 minute period. 4.4 magnitude, 10 kilometer depth at Tom's Place, California, which is of course called uh, the uh, Long Valley Caldera Supervolcano. The next highest was a 3.1. Three minutes before that, Tom's Place again at 9.8 kilometers depth, 3.1 magnitude, and you had a number of them around 1.1, again the same time, the same uh, depth. Uh, uh, other ones were uh, three hours later. Uh, most of them were around the same time, the uh, maybe 10, uh, 10 minutes uh, difference. And uh, they were the same length, the same depth. Let's take a look at them together so you can see where exactly they are. This is California. It's in Greek because I'm in Greece, but uh, this, is, this is the San Andreas Fault. This is the Garlic Fault right here. This is Ridgecrest. That's the lava flow that we have here. And this is Long Valley Caldera. This is Mono Lake. These are, this is Mammoth Mountain and uh, Crawley Lake right there. So that's exactly where the earthquake swarm took place today. And a four point, that's Crawley Lake right there. This is exactly where our uh, the Long Valley Caldera is. And going back to the map, here we are. Let's get rid of this. All right, this was at 636, for example, 10 kilometers depth, 4.4 magnitude, which is pretty big. And we'll see that people felt it. Then we had a 3.1, just about the same depth, around the same time. And you had other ones that were smaller, about the same depth, about the same time, about 10 minutes difference, Mammoth Lakes. And uh, this was about three hours after that. And you can see that, okay, that's about the same time. This is a quake swarm taking place there. As you can see, it's about an hour later. And pulling out, Crawley Lake and uh, Mono Lake right there. This is the Long Valley Caldera as you can see. And of course Ridgecrest has its own earthquakes there. This whole area of Ridgecrest of course is Casa Volcanic Field, Salt and Buttes, that has a geothermal plant there. Ridgecrest has a geothermal plant and uh, so does uh, Long Valley Caldera. And going to the uh, volcano discovery site for Long Valley, we see that the 4.4 was followed by, again, basically the same depth, 1.4, 1.6, Tom's Place and Mammoth Lakes is all, all Long Valley Caldera, uh, 3.1 that we saw before, 1.7, 2 magnitude, 2.1, 1.3, 0 0.9 magnitude, 1.8, 1.1, 1.1. This is all Long Valley Caldera area, as you can see here. The Mono Inyo craters, the uh, faults, as you can see, is a real mess here. Basalt, quartz, rhyolite, early rhyolite, and these are the January quakes. Number of earthquakes versus time, past 30 days, past 90 days, we saw an uptick here uh, today, that's today, February 2nd, okay? Uh, we've had an increase since uh, November to December, and today, of course, an even bigger increase, okay? And of course they were felt. Let's go back to this. 
not this was the bigger one of course was felt sorry let's go back to this Five hundred and sixteen, and we can go to the shake map. And the contours. Shake stations, of course, everywhere. And the tectonics. I doubt that there's that much population at the volcano. It's just outside of it. So this is where we're getting our... But you can see the, the amount of uh, San Andreas here. And the Walker Lane fault system. We know that um, it's a number of faults joined together. And um, that's where the Ridgecrest earthquake took place in July. The July 4th, 6.4, July 5th, 7.1. Ridgecrest right there was at the southern part of the the Walker Lane fault system. That has the pressure take it takes up the pressure of about 25% of the subduction of the Pacific plate underneath the North American plate, and the San Andreas takes up the other 75% of the pressure. And of course, we have a lot of uh, the high threat volcanoes of California are situated right on the Walker Lane fault system. Of course, the Long Valley is a supervolcano. Normal seismic activity, that was 2013. 2013. Following the Bishop Tuff eruption and the formation of Long Valley Caldera, supervolcano, of course, 670,000, uh, years ago. Activity continued in the central part of the caldera to form a lava dome. Smaller explosive eruptions of rhyodacite pumice occurred as well from outer ring fracture events. And the last activity was around 50,000 years ago. In its early history, the caldera contained a large lake where the new lava dome formed an island. Beach deposits can be seen on the caldera walls today. Later, the lake drained through the Owens River Gorge. The younger Inyo craters overlap the caldera on the northwest, but are chemically and tectonically distinct from Long Valley magmatic system. And these are the beautiful pictures of them. Crater Lake, close to the lake. Isn't that beautiful? Amazing. And the path to the other valley volcanic dikes can be found cutting through sedimentary rock. Amazing. And of course, turquoise water from the river along a small valley with fumaroles. Look at that coloring is, is unreal, isn't it? Amazing. Dried crust of salt. The Salt Lake Asal in northern Danaki in Ethiopia. Rift valleys, cinder cones. You find similar things like this over here. Some felt earthquakes occurred recently along southern boundary, Long Valley Caldera, the latest at 3.8 magnitude. Of course, this was uh, 2013. Well, the 4.4 we had today is a lot bigger than this, obviously. This is not unusual for volcanic system, does not mean any volcanic eruption should be expected in the near future. Here we are at Geodesi, and I'll leave a link below for you for this. This is all the GPS systems worldwide. And this, the, here we are at Mammoth Lakes, Long Valley Caldera area, right here. And we're going to take a look at the GPS to find how the um, deformation is taking place and if there's any land movement where it's going to. Let's go in a little bit further more. Okay, this is Bishop, Bishop Tuff right there, the Mono Inyo area. Mono and Inyo. And this is the all of the area of Tom's Place, Long Valley Caldera. Let's take this one here, P644. Okay, we see that it's going towards the east. It's going towards the east. No, sorry, it's going west. If it's going up, it's going towards the east. It's going west. 
and this is it's going south it's going southwest it's going southwest it's moving southwest and uh, I guess it, you would say it's seasonal basically inflating southwest and inflating that's the area of Tom's place and let's go to the um, Mono Lake area see if we have any okay okay this is also going west and south it's going southwest basically stable southwest southwest and should we take here Inyo it's not working it looks like take one in the south wow okay this is going west this is somehow uh, showing a lot of movement this is the past 2000 from 2008 to 2020 okay we so show a uh, deflation and then inflation and then basically steady here inflation deflation this is uh, moving uh, south then north south and then steady so it's going west I would say northwest a little bit on this case okay let's take this one here Sierra National Forest okay this is going west it's going southwest and basically steady southwest and steady and let's take one a little bit to the east of this Yes, there's nothing there. Let's take this one. It's not showing us. Mono Mills. Okay. Okay, it's steadily going west. And it was going south, and then it started going north, and basically it's going north. Okay, and it's really inflating here. Really inflating. You can see the movement from the um, GPS. And let's take a look at what's going on around Ridgecrest. Pull out a little bit, go back down. Here we are. That's the garlic fault. Ridgecrest is here. Let's take this one. Um, okay, let's take another one because that doesn't seem too great. Let's take this one. They seem to have adjusted that, so we'll have to take another one. Let's take this one here. Yeah, they seem to have adjusted the... Uh, but basically it's going... This is also going west. Okay. Um, you see that we have movement, of course. Uh, now that we're here, I want to go to uh, another area that we have earthquakes lately, and that's, I want to go to, Vol to the uh, Vancouver Island area. Remember that that has a lot of movement, and that gives Ridgecrest an earthquake, because somehow the pressure gets released there. Let's take this one. Okay, this is also going southwest. And it has movement, I would say seasonal, but also a little bit of inflation lately. And let's take one here on the northern side of the island. Again, it's going southwest, and it's inflating a little bit. Okay, basically it's going southwest, southwest. Shall we take, okay, let's take one here. Okay, that's not going southwest. That's going um, northwest. A little bit deflation lately. 
that's going northwest. It's going northwest, northwest. So these are going southwest, it's going northwest. Let's take one here. That's around the Juan de Fuca. That's going northwest and slightly inflating, northwest, northwest. So you can see that that's got movement as well. So I'll leave a link below for you for this. That's quite big of an earthquake, 4.4. Uh, we saw the one in uh, the uh, Volcano Discovery talking over 3.8 being quite big, but uh, it's not unusual. It doesn't mean that it, there's a, a super eruption coming. It's just part of the natural uh, uh, activity of the area. This was back in uh, 2013. And today we had a 4.4 .4 and the, the earthquake swarm there. Oh, we just had another one. In this past hour that I'm talking to you, we had a little one of 1.4 as well. Uh, so all of you there, please be very careful. Um, we did have reports, as we said, of this being felt. And there it is again. It's right on the fault lines. Okay. And going back to this. 518 people have felt it, even though, of course, there are not any people living there. The point is that they felt it in the nearby areas. Okay, and let's put in some uh, streets. Okay. Fresno and the area, as you can see. I'll leave links below for you for this. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.